Hello, this is Brian Myers, and welcome to another episode of Debunking Flat Earth. I'm going to start a 15-part video series on over 200 proofs on why the Earth is a sphere. I have put hundreds of hours into researching this, and I feel that I have come up with all of the most definitive proofs that the Earth is a sphere and definitely not flat. And we're going to start with the most obvious proofs, which is actual photo evidence from space. It doesn't get much better than that as far as a proof goes. I mean, we actually have pictures of the full Earth sphere from space. Not one, not two, not hundreds, not thousands, but hundreds of thousands, perhaps in the millions now. Well, let's get right into it here with the real photos of the Earth, because a lot of flat Earthers, and I've heard this, them tell me directly, and I've heard it in forums and on videos, if you can just show me one non-composite real picture of the whole Earth from space, I'll be a believer. So, as I mentioned, we, we literally have hundreds of thousands of these. So, what's up here? Well, they say that NASA lies, that it's composite, it's CGI, it's fake, it's a painting. You know, it's this or it's that. It's made in the studio, it's made in Hollywood. They just don't really believe these images, even though we have, you know literally hundreds of thousands of them now. Let's start with the actual Apollo images because these were taken with actual cameras. And I want to especially look at the blue marble because this is the one that is not only the most iconic, but it's the most convincing because it's the one that, that really had the whole Earth image from space. The others had different phases of the Earth, just as you get phases of the moon, same reason. So this one is, to me, just a nail in the coffin on flat Earth. And and we're going to go through in this video the reasons why it's so definitive, and then we're going to look at the flat earth objections, and we're going to answer all their main objections. Here's an image of the blue marble. This is actually right from the NASA website, and this is the pure scan from the unedited, uncropped um, original photograph. Now, it is a digital image, so it's not the actual original image, obviously, but it is the best that we can get online, at least. Now, versus the one that was actually published, you'll know it's a little bit duller, it's upside down, it's not cropped. But to me, this is the most beautiful. I, I just love this image here. And, um, of course, it's nice to see it turned around right side up so you can see Africa kind of more easily. But, I mean, it's just, it's just so real looking. I mean, they did not have CGI back in the 19, late 60s and early 70s. In fact, I was watching a little documentary of the CGI with the Pixar and they were basically just doing a hand, a human hand, and the limits of the gra the limits of the graphics and the computers back then, it was just a really really crude graphics. And this was the guy that really started Pixar, right? So we know what he's done over the years. So they did not have the CGI technology back then to create images like this. So the blue marble is an image taken from space from the Apollo 17 spacecraft on its way to the moon on December 7, 1972. And it was taken right at 5.40 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this was the last Apollo mission. So, And it was the first time that we got a full spherical image from space with no phases, as I mentioned. Now, it was taken about 29,000 kilometers or about 18,000 miles above the Earth's surface. So that's why you notice Africa looks a little big because, you know, the, it wasn't far enough away to get the proportions right. So there's a little perspective effect, which we'll get into in this video. Now, this was taken by Harrison Schmidt with a Hasselblad 70 millimeter camera using an 80 millimeter lens. And what I like about that is this is an old fashioned camera, really high for the time, it was one of the best cameras that you could possibly get. But the, it, the image itself was actually developed in a dark room. This is not a digital photo, this is an actual photograph from an old fashioned camera. So it just doesn't get more real than this. Now, if you take some time to really zoom in on it, and I'll put a link below this video where you can actually download this image yourself, but you're going to notice the, the, the amazing detail of the high-resolution scan. Just the details of the clouds, the details of Africa. You can see Africa kind of in a clear weather here. And even if you look at this image in the lower left, which would be the upper right on the published image, you will even see the Tamal Nadu cyclone. And you can see it kind of swirling there on the lower left. So just amazing detail. And the more when you really kind of really zoom in on this, it's just so convincing. Now, flat earthers really hate this image for many reasons. But 
First of all, it is an actual picture taken with an actual camera developed in a dark room. So they can't cry CGI. They can't cry fake, composite, digital. It's an actual camera. And the second reason they don't like it is that it actually shows a picture of Antarctica. And this was one of the reasons why they took the picture. They saw that when they were going away, they were like, wow, look, there's Antarctica. And they wanted to get an image, the first ever image from space of Antarctica, because the other space missions didn't capture Antarctica. So in and, and this, obviously, for flat, if you know the flat Earth mythology, which is what I call it, or the flat Earth belief system, that Antarctica is an ice wall and it's not a continent. There is no South Pole. So for the Apollo 17 to actually have an image of Antarctica is just an absolute nail in the coffin of the flat Earth. I mean, it just wrecks their whole model, having, having Antarctica just show up, not to mention the whole spherical image from space. I've kind of boiled it down. I've listened to a lot of flat earthers try to debunk this and other images from space, and it seems to come down to four things. The first thing that they always say is, of course, CGI, fake, composite, et cetera, et cetera, NASA lies. Um, the second thing they'll say is that why are there no stars in the background? And the third thing they'll talk about, the disproportionate size of the continents, and fourthly, they have also mentioned that it should be night based on dayandnight.com when the whole image was clearly in the daytime, meaning Africa was in the daytime. So I want to go through and debunk each one of those because really, as you'll see in this video, going through all four of those, they've got nothing left except to accept it and to swallow the pill that the earth is a sphere. And we've had evidence of this. I mean well, going back to 300 B.C. with Eratosthenes' experiment, but we've had actual uh, photo evidence of this whole image from space since the late 60s. Um, but again, let's go through these one by one. So point number one is, is fake CGI, etc. Now, I've heard some flat earthers, I won't mention any names, but I've actually debated some and have talked one-on-one -on -one to some of the top flat earth influencers, and they claim to have used photoforensics.com or forensically. And I actually spent a whole day going through forensically, and I, watched, I followed along with their tutorials, looking at this high-resolution scan of Blue Marble and going through it. And, of course, it's a digital scan, so um, you will see some little inconsistencies in the error-level analysis. But as the guy in the tutorial led me through it, the obvious errors come through with the course level, meaning as you get to course levels of, uh, of looking at error level analysis, only the obvious mistakes are left. Because I uploaded my own photograph of myself that I took on my iPhone, and I was getting some errors in the image. So digital photos, and I actually talked to a couple lawyers that were photo forensics experts, and I was going to hire one, but I didn't want to pay the money. Um, they're very expensive, but they told me digital photos typically don't hold very well in the court of law. You, um, they can, but you've got to do a lot of other steps. And you can see from this image here that I have up that um, when you do photo forensics, you've got to, it's many steps. You know, you, you kind of have to research the whole situation. You have to, you know, do reverse image searches, look at the metadata, look at the reputation of the source. And, you know, a photo forensics expert that is going to be testifying in a court of law, they have to have a very comprehensive list of things. It's not just like photoforensics.com or an online tool like that. So, and, and that can show you the obvious things. And I could not find any obvious problems with Blue Marble. Now, here's a challenge to any flat earther out there. If you can find what's called a red label original NASA photo of Blue Marble, Take it to a, a court-certified photo forensics expert where in a court of law, the testimony would hold. If you can show me that these original photos that you can buy, by the way, in auctions, they're not cheap. I'm looking myself right now for one, but they're in the thousands of dollars, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars. But these are developed with the original negatives. So these are not scans. These are not digital copies. These are actual images from the original negatives of the blue marble and they do exist you just have to pay a lot of money to get one so regardless of how you can get it if you can show with a, with a certified because 
people like some of these flat earth influencers, they think they can do photo forensics with photoforensic.com, but they're not photo forensics experts. And it's just a load of BS. I mean, I, I hear them say, oh, we, I, we looked at it on photoforensics.com and it's a fake photo. It's like, you're not a photo forensics expert. You do not know what you're doing. I'm sorry. So if you want to show me proof that this photo is fake, you hire a photo forensics expert that's trained to do this and use one of the original photos and then I'll believe you that it's a fake. Otherwise, shut up. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just get a little passionate because I'm just so tired of hearing it from some of these top influencers. And the next thing they'll say is, well, it can't be real because there's no stars in the background. Well, any photographer will tell you that. You know, to get the stars in the background, you'd have to open up the exposure. And you can see in the bottom left here, if you open up the exposure to get the stars, the whole image of the Earth is going to wash out. So you have to... You, you know, you have to set the exposure low so that the Earth shows up perfectly because they're, they're trying to get a picture of the Earth. They're not trying to get a picture of the stars. So if they wanted to get a picture of the stars, they could have set the exposure to do that, but that's not what their purpose was. So, okay, that's debunked. The next objection is, is that the continents are dis disproportionately big. So, again, if you look at the blue marble scan, you'll see Africa does look a little big, but... If you actually put that into any good tool, like I'm going to show you Walter Bizzle here in a second, but I just want to show you this perspective idea from a globe. I, I did this, the one on the top there I did myself. The one on the bottom, the person had a better camera, so it's a little more obvious. But even the one that I did myself by doing it up close versus far away, with I, I used both a 15 millimeter and a 45 millimeter setting, when I got up real close and to get the whole image, and I made sure that the that the that the globe was in the full camera frame so that it's the same size. So you can see the one on the right here, Africa's larger than the one on the left. And this, this is all due to perspective. It, it's due to the fact that we're looking at a three-dimensional object from different distances away and we're capturing that image on two dimensions. So when you put three dimensions into two dimensions, you're going to always get distortions when you have different distances and different um, fields of view, right? So, um, and you can see the one on the bottom is even a little more obvious. So anybody, you can do this experiment yourself and see that the reason why Africa looks a little big and, and some of the other full Earth images from space, depending where they were taken, the, the continents can look bigger or smaller. I've seen some of these flat Earth influencers try to get out of scale and say, oh, look, the United States is supposed to be this long, and look, it's taking up the whole top of the globe, which we know is, you know, you know the circumference of the Earth, you know, 6,000 miles, whatever. And they just don't know what they're doing. They're, they're trying to apply a scale on a two-dimensional image that's taken from a three-dimensional globe. That, 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 that's not how it works. So, again, do these little experiments yourself and see for yourself. Don't take my word for it. It's very easy to, to debunk that. So, and you can see this image here is kind of showing that when you have a, a close-up observation, the field of view, you're not getting the whole... Um, you're only getting a small little region of the Earth. And here's Walter Bislin's tool. This is really cool. Now, now I'm going to put a link below this video so you can see for yourself. But you can play around with this. You can actually adjust the distance away. You can adjust the view, the tilt, the rotation. So, so what I did here is I set the distance away to 29,000 kilometers, which is how far the, the Apollo 17 was away. And I put it to Africa about the right tilt where it was located. And sure enough, when I look at this side by side with the blue marble image, it comes up as a match. And it's because of the perspective effects that you get a larger view of Africa. You're just not getting that f the full hemisphere all at once. You're getting most of the hemisphere, but it's not all of it. So that's why Africa appears a little distorted. Okay, so, so that's, a, that's debunked. So the next objection I've heard, and I've had some flat earthers even do, or I've seen some flat earthers do a whole video on this topic, is they'll go to dayandnight.com and, uh, or timeanddate.com. Time I'll, I'll put a link below the video. But, but or yeah, there it is, timeanddate.com. So timeanddate.com, you can actually enter the exact time and date of the Apollo, and you can see where the sun was at that. So the whole premise of them trying to debunk this is that obviously Africa is fully lit, so it must be daytime on Africa. And what they did is they used incorrect data online, which shows the time being five hours earlier. But when you actually go into the flight logs of the Apollo mission, 
and you look at the launch time and the photograph was taken about five hours later, you can get, you can get almost exactly 5.39 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So when I, this is something I did right here. I went into timeanddate.com. I put that exact date in, and sure enough, look, voila. It comes up exactly as the whole blue marble showed, which is that whole side of the Earth being illuminated. Again, that's why it was a whole Earth image, because they were like right on with the view and the sun at their back, so they were able to get the full side of the Earth, just like the full moon, right? So this debunks that. So again, the problem with that they were doing, they were not using the right time. And when, of course, if you don't use the right time, Africa will be in darkness. But it wasn't. Again, provably so. Again, this is all stuff that's online. You can see this for yourself and find out all this data. Again, you can see this is the exact date and the time in Eastern Standard Time. Okay, I want to conclude this video with something really cool. So there is a, pro a software program that's free called Celestia. Maybe you know about it, maybe you don't. And you can download this for free. It, it took me five minutes to do this. And what's really cool about this is it'll show you exactly what the Earth looks like and it'll light up the Earth. So if it's, if it's nighttime, it'll show it as night. If, there's the, if the Terminator line is there, if it's like, you know, dawn, between dawn and dusk, you'll see the line right down the middle. And so I went and typed in uh, the location, because you got to put the location, so it's about, you got to type in minus 30, which is 30, 30 degrees south, longitude is 31 degrees um, uh, east, and, which is positive here. And the distance away, even though it's 29,000 kilometers, this, pro this software program is going to the center of the Earth, so you got to add 6378 uh, kilometers. But you can see in the upper left there, it's kind of faint, but it's you can see 29,000 kilometers exactly. So I put the exact time in, and look at this. Look how beautiful this is. It comes up with exactly what the blue marble showed. And what's so beautiful, I, I see I put a little red underline under location and time there. You can download Celestia.com. You can download this yourself. It's very easy. Just click on location. You're going to pick the earth, not the sun or the moon. Pick the earth. Put the latitude, longitude, distance away, and then put in the time. And voila, you get an exact replication. And we're, so we're seeing the blue marble as we should see it. Now, Celestia does kind of add random clouds here. So this is not going to be the exact cloud cover. But this is going to show you, the, and you can see Antarctica is not exactly right. But, but the, the, the amount of Antarctica is going to be proportionate to what is seen on the blue marble. And to me, when I did this, I just got goosebumps. I'm like, wow, amazing confirmation, meaning... There is nothing out of the ordinary that debunks this blue marble photo. And we do, we do checks on the size of the continents based on the distance away, the fact that it's, light time, that it's daytime over this whole area of the Earth, uh, the fact that it's an actual photograph taken with an actual high-quality camera developed in a dark room. And, you know, and, and of course, with the stars in the background, we know that's not an issue because they were opening up the exposure or they, they were not opening up the exposure, they were lowering it to get to Earth. So you put all that together, that debunks every possible flat Earth objection, and it leads to one conclusion. The Earth is a sphere. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do like and subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I have at least another 15 or 20 more coming where we're going to go through 200 proofs why the Earth is is most definitely a sphere, and this is proof number one, and I think the best proof.